This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 30,000 photographers that includes equipment insurance, education, and business tools made specifically for small business owners like you. If you guys are familiar with my work at all, you would know that I've been using a feature called High Speed Sync for many years. This is a feature that is available with off-camera flash, but it's also a feature that's not available with every off-camera flash out there. If you don't know what this feature is, it's simply just a feature that allows you to use any shutter speed that you want with your off-camera flash because without that feature, without high-speed sync, there's always going to be a limit to the shutter speed that you can go to with your off-camera flash. That sync speed, that limit is going to depend on the specific camera model that you have. On my Sony a7R 3 that's 1 250th of a second and on my Sony a6000, that's 1 160th of a second. But the point is I've been using this feature for many years because it allowed me in a convenient way to shoot the way that I shoot, which is using a wide aperture in bright outdoor conditions. There's only three camera settings that allow you to change your exposure of your shot, which are ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. But let's say, for example, we wanted to use flash outdoors in bright sunny conditions, and I wanted to stay at F1.4. So let's lock that in. F1.4 is the first setting, and then ISO is gonna be the lowest, which is ISO 100. That's the second setting. And then the third setting left is the shutter speed. Well, with off-camera flash without high-speed sync, I'm limited to 1 250th of a second. So at f1.4, 1 250th at ISO 100 in bright sun, I can already tell you from personal experience from shooting in those conditions for many years that you're going to have a very overexposed shot. So the only way now to get a proper exposure is to stop down your aperture to something like f16, which again is something that you didn't want to do. You wanted to stay at f1.4, but that's literally the only way that you can get a proper exposure by stopping down your aperture and sacrificing the nice bokeh behind the person and shooting at f16. That limit with the shutter speed is exactly why I used high speed sync for many years because it allowed me to use a wide aperture and just increase the shutter speed instead to bring down the exposure of the environment. I shot with high speed sync for many years, but I always knew that there was a downside to it. And that's exactly why I wanted to make this video. And the downside to using high-speed sync is a huge sacrifice in power. I'm going to take a quick break right now to talk about today's sponsor, which is PPA, Professional Photographers of America. I actually recently asked you guys on Facebook if you were members of PPA, and some of you guys were, but not all of you guys were. So I want to take a quick second in today's video to talk about some of the benefits of joining PPA. The very first thing I want to talk about is the $15,000 worth of equipment insurance, which is going to be very beneficial for you to have in case you're just starting out. There's full replacement coverage that's only going to cost you a flat $350 deductible, or you can repair your equipment for a flat $50 deductible. Another benefit of joining PPA is the data recovery services they offer. In case you've ever done an awesome photo shoot or a very important event and you experience your photos not just showing up on your card or something happening to those files, then it's definitely really, really important to make sure that you have some sort of data recovery services and that's where PPA has your back. PPA also offers customizable contracts that's going to help you out in case you need to shoot anything at all. You're always going to have to have a contract. I can tell you from personal experience, not having a contract for certain jobs when I was just starting out in photography really did not benefit me. I was going to see something harsher there, but you definitely need a contract whenever you do anything. If you want to join PPA and I highly recommend that you do, then take a look in the description area below because in there you'll find a link that will give you a special discount off of your membership. Whether you're just starting out in your business or you've been shooting for a couple of years already and want to take your business to the next level, then PPA is where you need to be. As I mentioned before, the biggest downside to using high speed sync is the sacrifice in power output. If you're using a 600 watt strobe, which is what I used for many years, then using that strobe in high speed sync you're not actually getting all that power. You're not getting 600 watts of power, even though you might use that strobe at full power and it'll show one over one, which is full power on Godox strobes. You're not actually getting all that power. The way that high speed sync works is that instead of just shooting with one big pulse of light, which is typically what the flash will do without high speed sync, you're getting multiple strobes of light. That's what's called high speed sync. And because of the way that it works, you're not getting, you're not able to get all the power from that strobe. So my 600 watt strobe in high speed sync is actually around something like 200 watts. So to give you guys a visual of that, I'm going to bring out two strobes right now, my 600 watt strobe and the 200 watt version of the Godox strobes. If somebody told you that this strobe right here 
not that big. It's the Godox 8200. This is actually the pro version, but the Godox 8200, if somebody told you this strobe right here would give you the same output as this big old strobe, would there be any reason to use this strobe over this strobe? Personally, I would be using the more portable light, this one right here, instead of this big old light. And that's actually what I've been doing for a couple of years now. When it comes to strobes in general, usually the bigger strobe is gonna cost more and be bigger physically than the smaller, weaker strobe. That's gonna cost less. So why would you go ahead and get a bigger strobe and use less power to the point where you could be using something much, much smaller? By avoiding high-speed sync, I've been able to use my smaller, more portable strobes to get the same results as my bigger, heavier strobes. And the biggest reason why I'm able to do that is because I'm now using ND filters. But I do wanna save a whole video about ND filters versus high-speed sync in another video, which will give a little bit more in-depth information about those two things and why I've been using them. The main point that I wanted to make in this video is to just tell you guys about that power loss because for many years now, I think there's not been a lot of people talking about this power loss. And it's actually been kind of like seeming like the opposite thing has been going on with a lot of different news articles, um, photography websites. It seems like a lot of people think that if you use high speed sync, you'll get more out of your strobe when it's actually the opposite, you'll get less out of your strobe. So I wanted to make this kind of PSA to let you guys know about that power loss because it can really, really cut out so much power from your strobes and you might just benefit from using something like a narrow aperture or using something like ND filters, which is what I've been using for a couple years now. On the screen right now, I'll go ahead and throw two quick examples of when I shot without high speed sync to show you guys how much power is showing up in that shot. And then when I barely entered high speed sync and you can definitely visually see how much power I lost when I entered into high speed sync. And if you guys don't believe me, you can do your own test with your own off camera flash. What I recommend you guys do is you shoot at the max shutter speed without high speed sync. So if you have the Sony a7R III, again, that's gonna be one two fiftieth of a second. Shoot at that shutter speed, choose whatever aperture you want and adjust the ISO to be something like 100, take a shot and then change the shutter speed to be the very next one, which is gonna be 1 3 20th of a second. And then raise the ISO just one third again to get the exact same exposure as the previous shot and just see how less intense your strobe will be. That's exactly what I did to see the power loss myself before I went ahead and just bought a very expensive uh, Godox light meter and saw exactly how much light was being lost. And if you guys are curious about how much light is gonna be lost with any of the Godox strobes, let me know in the comment section below and I'll give you guys an answer there. But I'm saving all of the information for a more detailed in-depth video of High Speed Sync. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of information. It's something I've been meaning to talk to you guys about for quite a long time now. And again, if you guys wanna join PPA, definitely check out the link in the description area below to get that special discount off your membership. Take care guys, and I'll see you in the very next video.